Hello everyone, welcome again to Behaviour and Environment and to our second module which is going to be dealing with consciousness. We humans are embedded within a multifaceted environment of physical, biological, psychological, social and cultural domains, as you learnt in the first module. But it is the psychological domain that occupies centre stage. It's the nexus where it all comes together and our mind is our point of reference for experiencing the world in which we exist. Have you ever considered the strangeness of having a mind? Of being made entirely out of, well, meat, really? And yet being able to think? How we relate to the world around us and the people within it, in other words, our environment, utterly depends on that piece of meat we call the brain. And yes, it definitely is meat, I can attest to that. When I was quite young, we often had uh, brains for dinner, uh, not human ones, of course, and very tasty they were too, as I recall. Everything we experience and everything we do is produced by the brain. It's an electrochemical information gathering and processing machine that, according to latest estimates, uh, contains around 86 billion neurons, or specialised brain cells. It weighs, give or take across individuals, about one and a half kilos, and it's very soft, uh, consistency is sort of a bit like jelly. Now, neurons generate electrical signals when activated, and neurotransmitter chemicals, for instance, you might have heard of some of them, dopamine, serotonin, are released by one electrically activated a neuron across a tiny gap called a synapse to pass the electrical activation on to another neuron. Now each neuron has around 1000 of these connections with other neurons, creating some 86 trillion, that's 86 million million connections across the brain. Patterns of connection across vast numbers of neurons encode information and instructions to generate everything. Perceptions, memories, uh, images, language, emotions, values, goals, attitudes, what we see, what we hear, etc, etc. And of course, all behaviour, uh, which includes uh, moving, certainly, and of course, it includes speaking. Now, this process is similar to the way patterns of binary uh, transistors or patterns across binary transistors in computers, where one codes for on or on codes for one and off codes for zero, uh, allows computers to encode their information and allow them to do all the magical things that uh, they're now capable of doing. Right at this moment, billions of electrochemical signals and connections are occurring inside that piece of squishy meat within your skull. But unlike computers, we don't quite know how the encoding happens. Uh, we're getting more information uh, day by day, and we've got some ideas about some of it, but much of it is still a mystery. And of course, that most mysterious thing of all is consciousness. Okay, over now to to this module itself, which expands on the groundwork laid down in Module 1 by introducing in more detail the psychological domain, and in particular, consciousness, which forms the, the interface for human-environment interactions. Uh, consciousness, in fact, serves as the relationship between the brain and its environment. For each of us individually, from our own personal points of view, of course, Consciousness is our environment. We'll be looking at three questions in this module. And the first is, uh, what is consciousness and why is it important? The second is an interesting one. Uh, can we trust our consciousness? And I guess the short answer to that is, well, yes, we can. But, um, well, actually, no, we can't fully trust it. And the third question is something that's beginning to concern quite a few people, and that's the question of whether our modern life, the, the pace of it, uh, the, the need to multitask all the time, 
whether that is actually changing our consciousness and probably not in a very good way. Okay, there we have it for module two and it's now over to you to do the serious reading to get all this material into your brain.